ESL1 Birmingham is considered a mini TI in terms of caliber of teams. It is crazy that everybody here is so good. Uh, and there also has just been a new patch. So it's very tricky to, to be on top after a new patch hits and then consistently do well. And I think the group stages were also very tough for, for teams. A lot of games to be played and two groups to keep track on as well. Um, I thought that after the first couple of games that, that maybe NIP was going to make it to playoffs and uh, at the same time if I look at the list of teams that made it to playoffs it's also no surprise that you know two teams have to be eliminated and it was a super close group. I believe it was a group with all the ties, it was 1-1 uh, in a lot of ways so it, it's a little bit unfortunate that the group turned out like it did but at the same time we did get to see a good showing of all the teams in the group and it's a shame that Ninjas in Pajamas couldn't make it further but I don't think of them less for them not making it to playoffs here. We didn't have a lot of expectations coming into ESL Birmingham. It was a fresh patch and this is a tournament that we were invited to. We didn't have to qualify. A lot of us have been to this tournament before. We've been to some ESLs previously through this year and they're, they're always a good time. We are a really good team, but we can have our ups and downs. So it's, it's pretty hard to say because we have a lot of momentum when we get going. If we actually get going, we can definitely be a top contender and we could like hit top three. But at the same time, it can also go the other way. So it's pretty hard to say for us. If you go by the list, you can make a good argument for every single player why he's good in that role. And to find fixes there, that, you know, that, that's not possible, I think, or at least you know, that, that is not something where you're going to see the, the improvements come from. I think it is going to be coming with, uh, with the experience of uh, knowing when to trust your teammates to carry the game through. We all know uh, 33 is definitely a big uh, core role in the, in the roster and everybody needs to sometimes work around him. They, everybody needs to be on the same page for what their plan is going into a, a Dota 2 game and um, maybe maybe that is the biggest challenge that PyCat has to make sure that when the game is done everybody has the same idea about how to play Dota 2 which is you know what the game is all about of course uh, and with the current patch change that's going to be an even you know, bigger challenge. In a way though, I think that might help them a little bit because they get to learn the patch anew with them all together and if they all learn it together, they're all on the same page and I think that is going to be the, the biggest challenge for them to continue being one team rather than five in talented individuals going into a tournament. I had like a bit out of my last 10 games, I lost 9. Insane mistake. I don't know what's happening. I have not bought one. I mean, I, Myself? I, I, I got gifted one last year. I think, I think so. Only if, one I, if, I play, if I play on them, I mean, I can't play. Got it on this mode? Yeah, yeah, I'll get I it on this. I hate it. I hate bought it because I wanted to avoid some people, you know? <laughs> you know, like I get silent on my team, I can avoid that and get silent. Silent? How many people can you avoid? I think it's like 15 matches. Oh, I have this. I mean, that feature is like a good one. I have even four. Yeah. I have like some. Uh, That's a good one. You can get the evil. I have uh, my board exclusion. Uh, That's a definite one. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that last is a good one. So we we're playing on a new patch this tournament. Uh, we haven't really had very many days to practice, but uh, the new patch is uh, it's great. Uh, for me, it doesn't matter that much. I just It's nice to see everybody excited to figure it out and have new changes and new cool things that people are learning about the game. It, it kind of reinvigorates the interest for a lot of people. Pretty much the way it goes in Dota that every tournament that isn't TI is kind of in a way practiced for TI. Even when you go into the tournament like with full strength and you're, you're trying your hardest, at the end of the day, everything is practice for TI. We're gonna try because winning is like a, winning is the best way. Coming into TI as a winning team is the best, the best kind of practice. We're gonna play a lot and hopefully the minor is gonna go better for us. And then we get to play the major and come into TI on the, on the, on the up. So Shane, how was your day so far? Having a good time? Excellent, sir. Excellent, magnificent. 
fine day in the Queen's country. Oh, it's, it's good. It's good to be home. It's good to be home. Yeah. That door. Jacket. Another fantastic six-day event for Dota 2. I know all the UK friends and family are all, very, all ready for it for the uh, final three days, of course, inside the National Indoor Arena. These two teams need absolutely no introduction, but we are going to give them one. It is OG versus NIP in this best of two series. To find out who's going to be taking the lead through in this group stage. Both teams looking up and ready for battle. What does this uh, middle tower do for OG? Why are they trying so hard to take it? Oh, hold on one second. They're trying to make a play onto Ana here. The uh, LSA will land and the damage is out before he can get the ultimate off again. Ana gets roasted in the bottom lane, but OG, now this mid lane tower is opened up for them. 33 trying to run himself out here. Will be able to scuttle himself to safety. Uh, then comes the hand of God, but PPD held still by the Ignis Fadas and the damage coming in. They've got the duel as well, and that's going to be a Chen falling down. 33 looking to maybe reinitiate as Ace comes in the back lines. Finds a kill onto Jerex. Nice now look at Striker Ray coming down. Thompson in some trouble, and he's Absolutely dead. It's a triple kill for Pada. Now they're going for more on top of Seb. Seb is killed off. It's an ultra kill at 13 minutes in for Pada. OG do not want to give up just yet. 40 seconds still left on that Aegis. Uh, one side left for OG. Jumping There's the bubble. Clone, clone. Well, he's actually going to survive a little bit longer than usual, but only because they want to go kill the actual Topson. That does result in Saxa dying. But now Topson going to be forced off out of this one. He doesn't have the BKB. It's still on cooldown. He'll get ripped apart. And there's your GG coming out. OG will lose game number one in his best of two series. NIP with a convincing performance to start off this tournament. We got a really good uh, first game. But we kind of just like rolled over them. We got a really good draft and we were very confident with our heroes. And it just kind of went like how we wanted it to go. Game two went really badly for us, I remember. The Furin was out of control. They picked some Furin on the third pick and we didn't really counter it. Like we just forgot to counter it basically. And no tail Furin is like, it's one of the favorites. And you, you cannot just let this hero do so much. No tell, ready with a global teleport. A gem even on Sebs. They know about any vision they've got placed down. And jumping on to Ace here. There's a great target. Can they bring down the Spectre in time? The double damage on the Storm is going to easily rip through the Spectre's defenses and send it to the grave. Now they're looking for more. PPD trying to run himself away. Gets that magic resist in. The double damage is doing nearly enough by itself. Zen, Top Zen, is Zen. going in. No tail is placed in behind. He's got that deep vision coming down. The No tail ward is thrown out. There's the epicenter being just charged up onto Fata. Bring down that Templar Assassin. It'll be a triple kill for Topson as OG rip NIP apart and take to their high. And I have to land the Provin. Looks like if you pick this uh, Shake or Rippo, I feel like opening a few years. Keep killing Provin this game, right? Huh? Let's keep killing Provin. I, I just think we just have to I think we should Provin. throw bodies of the Storm and the Snakes. Like but we should we just let you. Hmm? In two and two, we can't make. I think we should just force other people to the other lanes. Then eventually we're going to be able to win bots. I just think I you feel can't. like it's a losing scenario if you try lane bots. Yeah, I mean. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, can, can you impact top at all? Of course he can. Huh? Of course he can. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's what we should do. Like, I feel like the, you should be top and helping that lane. But it's like, I, I, just that, well I just think that we should. I feel like, like Oracle might as well do the uh, top. I just think we should ban profit. Like, like, if you pick this shape or. And you give them this problem. That's why like it's really important to like defend this mid tower. Like you have to throw bodies at this tower. Because even if you lose heroes, as long as you defend the tower, like you still have map to play. Yeah, I mean I feel like I feel like the the, the way the lanes goes, I feel like you kinda have to be tough with the shaker. If you can do something there, I mean I don't know how that goes or whatever or what happens, but I think what he did in the beginning bottom was really good though. The, the first kill, I think it's fine. But I feel like you can't leave the Enigma to, to the wolves. Because yeah. I feel like Enigma should... Looking at how the lane went after we got the two kills, like... That is pointless. Like, Oracle might as well be one or two. Yeah, you can just sit there and yeah, take the speed of the Sanky just pushes, yeah. You know, Oracle a piece of shit against this Yes, one. yes. I mean, and also, it's also like, the Storm was used to find it. Like, he did, he did really well. Even though the Shaker was there all the time, he did really well. And then, obviously, top is just... It just sucks for us. And that's why I feel like we need to have the... The Shaker kind of has to go there. Maybe the Oracle can go there too and kind of fuck with them. Or you guys go mid and kill the guy mid. That's two people. I mean, I think we should just kill this guy mid the way he was playing. He's playing on the our storm? high ground. The storm, yeah. yeah I, like, I, I think we should block this guy and we can TP one hero. Sure, the Oracle can port. I mean, he's the only one who can do it. We just leave the Spectre because 
Yeah. No one's helping the Spectre. The Spectre only wants levels. The way bottom played out, it's, it's just sad. PPD back on Tree and Protector. <laughs> it just needed it just needed one slight change to get it to happen. NIP are playing dark. They jump forward. Oh, my control. He's able to get the roar up and the support in. Here comes Ace. Turns on the Eclipse. Needs that extra damage. They want to kill off this Beastmaster. Another jump forward. Darkseer wall is down. They're still looking for the back lines. It's Farda. He's actually rooted up Kuro, so he's doing the work to kill off the back lines. While Miracle is still primary target. GH hits the Echo Slam in the back lines. And now Miracle goes to work. Turns on the damage. The Vat can't create enough space. PBD is the one to go down. 33 will surge away. Looking to get a little bit more distance between him and the rest of the team. Able to do so. And Look at the Ace, base! He actually has Look at more the life. He needs more damage. Legacy the base dead. is going down. The Tumba's doing the work. He's actually winning this game solo at the moment. Mind control. He feels like distraction. Have they got to relocate? They do. And that's exactly what they're going to do. Take him back. They have to be able to defend because Matumba's taking the tier 4 tower, clean up the top lane of Rax. But can they kill him before? No, of course you can't. Savage Roar will send them back. And they know the IO is returning to them. Liquid, let's have a bear hug. And actually, he brings Ace with him. Ember Spirit will jump in as well. Sucks so, so, so much damage at the start that he's still barely alive, and barely alive isn't alive enough. Miracle has a double kill. Ace will get the rebuttal into the Beastmaster, but is that really going to be worth it? If he can get out with his life, it will be. They've given him the living armor. He can turn it, try and fight and keep 33 alive. The back back. Already the IO is back to the wall. The fighting Kuro creating some distance. Miracle. Back to the, base. the BKB is up. Watch the base. They're still doing the work. This is why we got PIP. You've got Matumaman beating into the dire ancient. He'll leave his bear there. They need the core hero. But Matumba's already left. He's going home. The Matumaman LD was basically pushing our, uh, our high ground like before 10 minutes, I think. Like we lost the mid tower basically before the first catapult, which is something, which is something that really, really rarely happens. Like uh, we did not expect this to happen, and it also pretty much shouldn't have happened. But at this point, when we lost like basically two mid towers that fast to this LD, it's, it's, it makes the games very hard for us to play. The second thing, so we were pretty happy with our lineup, and yeah, they picked Mars, and I feel like Mar Mars is kind of a bait. It's a troll hero this this patch so far. Been nerfed quite a bit, and I feel like he lost every game. It's just kind of a useless hero. It just didn't do anything. It's kind of why they lost, and it was so easy, I think, to win. Top lane, trouble. Fada actually having to BKB. Mind control. Actually, use the monkey illusion. Fada will have to consume the cheese. As GH keeps his run going, Spy Cap is available, trying to wade out the BKB up second, and then he's able to hit that stun. Can't turn around for anything more, however. As uh, on bottom, 33 looking for his own kill into Miracle. So both are going to go down. Yeah, Catching Kuro out too far for Tom, but try to skewer him back. 33 saw that coming from a mile away, and they try and surge away Kuro, maybe with the mech. The fact creating some space. Kuro doesn't have to move his speed away. Nice then, then they're able to actually hit, spearing in Mars into his own tree with his own ability. The stun just lasts forever. Mars will go down as well. No buyback available from Matumaman. And NIP, they want this mid lane of Frank. I feel like the lanes that we put they benefited us tremendously. I, so. so uh, I think if you put the NS top, I think this game might be really hard. I think the lanes were perfect. I think uh, yeah, you played the mid lane really well. And NS got super fat. I was thinking about smacked the, the DS bar. I was thinking about queuing up the minus. Uh, I know, I know you were. I was a little spooked that you would. I think it was good yeah. that you didn't. I think I it would have been. Was, yeah, but I don't think it would be the end of the world. I don't think it would have been the end of the world, but okay. it definitely it would make it the game. The thing is, I see you on the lane, you have like, those of his stouts, you're mm -hmm. 1.4k gold, but he's also sitting there on 300 HP, you know, you could be like the boss of the game. Yeah. But if you just heal up, get your items, and then you're gonna fucking destroy the game. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, he did this right. Yeah. Yeah, but same, he went the other way. Yeah, yeah exactly. Where's my bad one? Oh shit, I left in the room. Hmm? Wait, it's awesome. Awesome. We are very inconsistent and I don't really feel like uh, we got the momentum really going yet. Like, it's a new patch so it's pretty hard to get that. Like, we don't really have our uh, core strats or how we want to play completely in check yet. It's pretty inconsistent right now, I feel like. Going into day two, uh, I knew that we were going up against Vici. They were kind of the team that we upset 
at the Dream League Major, which earned us a top six finish. Um, so I knew that they would probably be hungry for, for some revenge. We ended up losing 0-2 and they kind of kicked our butts and they proved why they are major champions uh, this season. It's still looking pretty bad for them as they do make a jump with DY. Paparazzi follows, needs a crit here, will get it, but Ace turns with the BKB Battle Trans. Manages to stay alive for a few seconds longer. The trouble is, Ori and Paparazzi still in full fighting form. Another stun will arrive with the connect field down. Green 3 charges forward with the Doom onto the Sven. The Dogs here can come in though. DY doesn't throw an Impale, but they've already killed off the troll. Dead for 50 with no buyback. And a Yules under the Monkey King will trap Vata inside with Ori. Don't get the kill on him, but they will turn back for 3-3 in what looks like an absolute bloodbath. Four versus one, the Doom has nothing to do. And a quick stun from DY catches PPD all the way inside that Radiant base for an additional bonus kill. And VG Gaming looks like they're walking it in. Oh, Surge. Oh, they killed the Sven. He had the cheese. He, like, he got it at the exact same time because someone uh, high-fived him the cheese. But uh, still, this game feels like it's going to end pretty soon. I think the biggest thing, I feel like it's this Doom. I feel like this hero did nothing. The only thing he did is Steve. He makes the laning stay, he makes the game really slow. Like, he, we have to wait for his, he didn't use Doom until minute 23. And I don't necessarily think, I mean, I don't really think it's super much on him. Like, he's playing into this nukes and they kind of just follow him with a bunch of heroes. And I just feel like he plays really slow. And we kind of have to wait for this clunky guy. He needs a BKB this game, he needs a Shivas, he needs a Blink, and even when he gets this, there's a Darkseer and a DP, and has to Doom both of them, and he can't. And because he will just search away the guy against Doom, and the DP will just pop off before. Even against the Sven, I also think Sven was probably the best last ban, because it's like the only thing that synergizes with the Darkseer, but I just feel like the, the Doom just makes the lineup really hard to play. Because I feel like that's the point of the over, kind of. like. We get the monkey move. against the DB though, monkey is supposed to like, like if Darkseer is doing monkey is supposed to like uh, fuck the DB and I'm supposed to fuck the Sven. Like, we just, we just don't have BKB and we kind of lost the game before. Like, we, every time we start a fight it's them going on troll for monkey. Yeah. Yeah. And then we just, it's super hard to play. I mean I feel like we, we, we see these disruptor nukes, I feel like Doom does not play super well into these heroes. Especially not before BKB. After BKB it's okay I think, but I feel like Night Stalker, he, he eats these heroes. Like, he really preys on these two heroes. Game two against Fichi, we started off with uh, quite a bit of lead. I think that we had a much better draft and better lanes than we did in the previous game. I think that we just, you know, once again, just kind of failed to transition properly out of laning phase and didn't make proper map movements, which um, gave Vici a lot of opportunities to get themselves back in the game after a bad start. No BKB, does have the level 2 Wukong. Yang makes the jump initially onto Ace, already a quarter of his HP gone. They turn onto the Wraith King now, looks like the rest of Vichy Gaming trying to make a soft retreat. They turn onto 3-3, there we go, they've grouped up, they've pummeled him, and this Wraith King's 1v3-ing, Fata Ace can't deal with Yang at all. Ace is just going to have to drop a gang of out of the fountain at this point and call the Gs. NIP. This one seems pretty over. A Beyond Godlike triple kill for Ori. 36 to 16, a 31,000 net worth lead, and there it is, PPD calls it. For the forward series, they're, they're probably the weakest team in our group. Uh, our group's pretty stacked. Uh, I think forward's now two and six after losing to us 0-2. So they're most likely gonna be one of the teams that gets eliminated. Uh, that being said, they're, they're not a bad team. They're qualified for the major this year through North America, uh, which is no easy feat. Maybe we were quite far behind in game two, uh, but once we got a couple of uh, BKBs on our core heroes and a couple of uh, great Warlock ultimates from myself, uh, we were able to uh, turn turn the game. They're gonna go on to snaking. Quick, easy, silence. Look how fast they can kill him. No, the Gus pushes him back. They have the regeneration against the Ghost Trap. 33 is gonna BKB up, and now he's losing a lot of life way too quickly. Maybe they can get him down. Yeah, they can. Reaper Science, 72 seconds down, and they get the pullback as well. One to the next, to the next. Ace is the man trying to stand his ground and fight. Maybe with some help. The Rock, the Fatal Bonds! Look at this build down damage. They just can't do it. MSS, he doesn't want to stick around here. He's killing off the rest of his team at this point. Aegis, he will burn. Yuan's back to the of the living, a quick gust pushing back the Nine Stalker, but the rest of NIP is there. He actually turns around to stand and face his enemy. Oh, NIP, what a fight! The turnarounds were there so hard from Warlock.
We've got a match against TNC. Obviously, two owing is going to put us in the best spot. You know, we've got one match to prepare for tomorrow. We've got a bunch of time tonight, and uh, we'll put in some work and. Hopefully we play uh, a little bit better. We've had some rough game ones. I, I don't know, maybe we're not a morning team. It, it definitely doesn't seem like it. TNC versus NIP. It's a best of two series here at the ES1 Birmingham group stages. And we'll be seeing who comes out on top. A very critical game for both of these teams because the loser does not stand very good chances of making it through to the playoffs. NIP, they're into Roshan, but Tim's, he's immediately in. Burrow Strike onto two, getting himself away, but nice he comes and going on. Look at the damage coming through the Sonic Wave as well. Ripping through NIP, there's nothing they can do about this. Trying to get up into the high ground. Kuka is chasing. BPD gets left behind. Fada is on the run right now. And with these remnants, he should just about be able to make it out of this, but a TP's coming in. Tim's, where is he? He gets it. The Yules is out as well. They actually find him. Fata, it doesn't matter how far you run, TNC will find you and TNC will kill you. I did like our draft and I thought we could have won, like our heroes were not good against Sven. I kind of underestimated the Sven hero, which seems to be uh, the rising hero of the tournament. We had both Beastmaster and Anti-Mage, which get, which get countered by Sven. Once Sven got going, they, they tilted him safely to make sure he got free farm, and he kind of just went out of control. We could have done it, but we, we made a couple mistakes, and then it just snowballed out of control with the spin. It's just TNC going to town. Now Saxer is back, Burrow strikes through into two, and just as quickly as he came back into the fight, he is just completely dead again. TNC, they will take the barracks. Mega Creeps now belong to TNC. They keep on going though, Fada trying to get back to the base right now. He's rocking the slow, slow run as Fada, Ace, PPD, they're all taken down. 33 inside the fountain, just holding on for as long as possible here. Sark controlled up and finished off. Gabby is godlike and they are into the fountain right now. And there's a GG being called by PPD. The game is over. NIP lose 2-0 to TNC. The second game we went for kind of a different draft. But once again, we kind of got uh, surprised by a hero that we didn't actually realize was so strong. They picked this uh, Bristleback to counter off Furion, which it was pretty unexpected to us. We, we kind of, after the game, we were kind of just sitting and like, oh, well, shit, this, this hero is actually strong. It kind of stopped, uh, I was playing Furion, and I had a really good lane on mid lane, but the Bristleback kind of stopped uh, all hopes we had for snowballing. He could just come and defend every tower. Yeah, we're obviously not happy with the results. It's like our third or fourth year side event this year that we've kind of underperformed in, which sucks because the venue is really nice and the, the crowd is amazing. So we, we would have liked to play on the main stage, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Uh, sometimes you get disappointing results. You just gotta get over it and move on to the next tournament. It's really tricky for Ninjas in Pajamas, I feel like this season, because Europe is so awfully stacked. It's really tricky to, to get to the right tournaments and to get the exposure. I feel like this is a team that gets better the more they play against good teams. And to do that, you need to qualify for everything. And uh, we all know that the meme about leave China to me from Peter. And that is actually, you know, they're, they're a good team against Asian teams, but to fight Asian teams, you got to make it out of the European qualifiers, which is really tricky to do. I feel like they have steadily been improving. In Europe, they come third, fourth. That's it. Like, sometimes they do very well, but they're not very stable. But I think if they can find that flow, nobody's going to expect them to be the number one, which is why they can actually have a good shot of being number one, because nobody's going to study them uh, as much as they are, for example, a team secret. And everybody's going to look at secret, see what they do, try to copy it. Um, that's going to be a normal thing. And I think Ninjas in Pajamas might benefit from that. And having a European teams such as Team Secret uh, that is above them, and taking all the attention away from the, the sneaky underdog. But I do think they're going into the tournament as somewhat of an underdog, especially compared to the other European teams. When I have time off after the replay finals, I'm gonna use it really well to just like be home, I think. Like see my friends, see my family. It's really rare when you play like, at this level and you just have to go to all these places all the time. Like I think like my best friends, I have quite a lot of best friends, like a group. And I don't think I've seen them for like four to five months now. And it's just pretty rough. Like, so I'm definitely going to see them and see my family and yeah, my girlfriend. Where's the shirt? I was like, oh no, he's wearing the jersey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One size fits all. It really does. Well, sometimes. Maybe I can sit there. Do you know what? I've stood in this queue for like five minutes with the top off as well, waiting for you guys. Really? Just, you're just that Not even exaggerated. You're just that eager. You just need an excuse to take the shirt. 
Maybe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm sure there was tons of ladies in that line you were trying to impress, right? Definitely not. I'm probably going to fly back to the States, um, see my parents for a bit, see my family. And then we will be back on the grind for a nice boot camp before flying out to China.